Hello everyone, welcome to Java Expert. In today's video, we will discuss about Eureka service. So it is a service registry. Now we will discuss about what is Eureka service and why it is required. Eureka is a Rust-based service which is used to locate the service in a cloud-based environment. We will call this as a Eureka server. So basically, if you take any microservices architecture, we will be running many services and each service we may run with multiple instances right if you take any cloud based environment you may not get the static ip for all the times the ips of any service which will change in you know every day it may change or in a particular interval it may change right so every time you know updating this uh, service ip or port in the client end it will be difficult for us right so that's where the place we need this eureka service Okay, so what will happen is whatever the instances or services we have, all the services will be registered into the Eureka server, right? So the client no need to uh, remember all our services, IP and port numbers, right? So client will interact with the Eureka server, it will get the list of instances for any service and it will invoke the call, right? So Eureka coming with Eureka client, which makes the call with Eureka service to get the available instance of a service. When if you want to use a Eureka service, right? So we'll have a Eureka server. Now it will act as a registry, and we have a Eureka client, which we need to be installed in the our service end. So that will make uh, you know, easy to make a call with Eureka server. Eureka client has an inbuilt load balancer that does the basic round robin load balancing. So for example, if you have multiple instances for any services, so when we invoke the Eureka service, Eureka server, you will get a multiple IPs and ports, right? So for, for example, if you take any product service, we may running with five, we may run with five or six instances of product service. So if you try to get the product uh, you know, instances, we'll get a five, six IPs, right? So we have to decide to which IP we have to invoke the request. So that's where the load balancer will be in place. So Eureka client comes with a very basic round robin model to know load balancer, so it will do the basic load balancing. And Eureka service follows the client side discovery pattern. So what it is, what it is client side discovery pattern means. So uh, we have a Eureka server, we have a Eureka client. So Eureka client decides the to which instance we have to call. So for example, if we call a product, no instance. We, we, we may get a five or six IPs. So client only is going to decide to which IP I have to invoke the call. The, basically, the load, no, no, the, the load balancing will happen in the client end. So this the entire responsibility is you know it, it's with the client. So that's why it's called as a client side discovery pattern. And uh, Eureka service is provided by Netflix. Basically, this Eureka service, this API, you no know, things, no, is being you know, basically developed by the Netflix. And it is now integrated with the Spring Cloud, right? So I hope you know, understand what is Eureka service and why we need it. Now we'll see this, you know, very simple diagram, how this REST call will happen without Eureka server. Suppose, you know, we have done all the you know, previous examples, right? We don't use Eureka. The simple thing, if you have a REST client, if you want to call a product service, then we will use our, you know, IP. Here I mentioned the local host and AG800 support. And our endpoint is product slash get product. So the client should know what is the IP and port and endpoint of product service. Then only we can able to make the rest client, you know, rest call. The same way for a sales service. If you want to know sales service running with a different port here, 8082, and endpoint is sales and get sales details, right? So it's a very simple thing. Now we'll see how the same thing would happen with Eureka service. So when you have a Eureka service, you have two parts, right? One is Eureka server and Eureka client. So Eureka server will run different, uh, it, it, it will run independently. So that's where you are mentioning here. So what happened is, whatever the services we are going to deploy, all the services is going to be registered with the Eureka, right? If you have a product service, it will be automatically, it will register, register with the uh, Eureka server. Same way, sales service also will register with the Eureka server. So whenever the REST client, now with Eureka client, basically we have to install, basically we have to use this Eureka client API in our REST client. In that case, when you want to call any service, the REST client first will talk to Eureka server and it will get the list of instance of any service. For example, I need a product service details. 
So REST client will give a request to Eureka server and get the list of product service. For example, so here in this diagram, I just mentioned only one instance of product service. Just consider we have a five product services here. So Eureka server will return the all five instances, host name and port details to our REST client. And the REST clients, we have Eureka client inbuilt load balancer. So load balancer will decide out of five, which one we have to invoke. So it is used as a you know, round robin, right? So it will decide to which product, uh, which instance of a product it has to invoke. Then it will invoke the call to the product service. So same way for our sales services also. So this is how this Eureka service you know, working. So I just you know explain very basic and you know how this Eureka service is works. So uh, this is all about this video. So all the report I have you know basic things are covered. In next session we will implement these things in the practical and we'll do the, all the practical steps. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video.